I'm Brittany Waldron reporting for Lafayette College. On March 28th, history professor D.C. Jackson is appearing on the History Channel's Modern Marvels program. The episode is an overview of the history of dams and their many uses. Jackson, who is the co-author of the new book, Big Dams of the New Deal Era, is prominently featured during the program as an on-camera expert. Today, I am interviewing Jackson about his extensive background in the history of water resources and his appearance on Modern Marvels. What are some of the topics you discussed during your interview for Modern Marvels? Some of the topics we discussed was hydroelectricity, the importance of, of dams providing this new source of electric power. You can get electricity by burning coal in a steam-powered plant, um, but hydroelectricity, where you use the, the power of falling water, becomes very important in the early 20th century. Um, and so that's one of the things that we definitely talk about. Uh, and in the, in, the, in the program, there's much on turbines, the technology where you take falling water and you transform it into rotating mechanical energy and then that's connected to a generator. So there's a lot in the, in the, uh, in the show about that and that's one of the important things. I also try to bring across the importance of uh, why people wanted to build them. The, the, the show also includes the environmental effects which I think are important and really need to be focused on because there's no free lunch. Mm -hmm. With dams, there's a cost that is that is incurred. Um, but what I'm trying to bring across is also that people benefit from them, and what society has to do is figure out that balance. Mm -hmm. um, the final thing that I that I brought to the course, I mean, the final thing that I brought to the to the show was this sense of the importance of monumentality and the way the large dams of the 20th century were built as monuments of of society, of as symbols of accomplishment. And you can't really understand the history of large dams if you don't understand how society has come to embrace them. At the same time, they also, and I wouldn't say fear them, but also they're concerned about their effect, but they embrace them as symbols of, of good, and that's a, that's a part of it. What was it like working with the History Channel? Has it been a rewarding experience? Oh, yes, it's been <laughs> very rewarding. Of course, I wasn't paid. So it wasn't rewarding in that sense, uh, but it was very rewarding in that uh, you get to work with really good professionals. They're on a pretty tight time. They're on a pretty tight timeline, so you don't have a lot of time to develop this or work with them. But I had a good relationship with Sean and Jessica there at Actuality Productions, and they put together a very good show uh, on in in a time frame of just a few months. So it was very positive, and you got to deal with really good professionals, people like you, mm -hmm. uh, who are out there and learning, doing something new. Next month they'll be on to something else. I don't know. It could be hamburger stands. Uh, drive-in restaurants. They, they, they're professionals that do a lot of different things, uh, but they really got into dams and the importance of water, and I had a good relationship with them. I certainly didn't have control over the script, but I did have a fair amount of input in reviewing drafts and reviewing rough cuts, so I was able to get some involvement. I was able to get involvement into the, into the creation of the project, and that was rewarding. What's next on the agenda for you? Do you have any current or upcoming projects? Well, I've got that cup of coffee over there that I want to drink <laughs> uh, in a few minutes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, I'm working on uh, projects related to uh, some big dam failures in the West that I've written about, the St. Francis Dam, which is not going to be in the show, but it, it could be. Um, uh, I'm working on a project there. Uh, I've got stuff uh, or work on a book on the role of postcards and visual images and the way people react to to dams. I know it sounds strange to say, oh, I collect dam postcards, mm -hmm. but I do. And I find it a really interesting way that people interact with the visual images of dams. And finally, a uh, thing that I'm, I'm uh, working on, actually, almost as we speak, my computer right over there, almost as we speak, uh, doing a, a, a history or an analysis of the movie Chinatown, which is about water development in, in Los Angeles in the 1930s. Uh, and I'm looking at it, both sort of the story that is told in this fictionalized movie and relating that to the actual events and, try, and giving people an understanding of how it, in some ways, really comports rather directly with the history and other ways that it is different. So I'm, I'm using that. And that's something I want to use in uh, the courses that I teach on water and society, you know, 
using how, how films bring across an important idea, uh, but then how that film, which is not history, relates to history. So that's a, that's a big one. That movie Chinatown and the analysis of its sort of historical veracity. Thank you very much for your time, Professor Jackson. We look forward to seeing the airing of your show. Brittany, you thank you. I'm Brittany Waldron, signing off for Lafayette College. So where would you go for fall, right? I was with the track team. Oh, really? In Myrtle Beach. <laughs> what's, your, what's your event? A half mile. Oh. So, yeah, it wasn't a very relaxing spring break. <laughs> Never is. No, no, boy, that's right.